Hey everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I have some project shares for KS Craft and these will be from their April dye release. I will link the products that I used down below on their uh, AliExpress store, but they should be available on their Amazon store as well. Um, I'll show you the dyes, the, uh, I'll measure my projects, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I brought this paper pad out just because I wanted to show you what I used for most of the papers for this project. This is uh, one of the newer ones from Michaels. It's by Recollections and it's called Oxford Garden. It's a beautiful paper pad. It's got gold foiling and um, I just wanted to use it for every project because I think it's so pretty. So that's what I used in case you're wondering for most of the papers. Okay, so let's get on to the dies and the projects. So the first one is called the Library Card Pocket Shakers. Hold on one sec. Okay, I had to let us out, sorry. Okay, so what I was saying, this is called Library Card Pocket Shakers. So it comes with these four pieces. You can make into a shaker or not, and it's really versatile. I think you could use it for lots of different projects. Also, you can use these individual rectangles for other things that you might need. This one, the, the one that you would cut out to make a card to go into your library po pocket is um, a perfect rectangle on the one that's the backing of the library card pocket. Uh, it's rounded corners on the top and then uh, squared off at the bottom. So this is the frame to make the shaker and then this is the part to make the pocket. Very simple to put together. You just fold it on the score lines after you cut it out and then put some double-sided tape or glue onto the tabs, fold them back and then glue them onto the backing of the library card pocket. So let me show you what I made. I made a couple of them. The first one I made into a shaker. So um, I think it came out really, really pretty. I used, again, that paper from Recollections and uh, I used two layers of Dollar Tree foam board to pop up the, uh, the frame for the shaker. And I used two layers because this is a thin frame and I find when I cut out the Dollar Tree foam board in my die cutting machine with thin frame dies, it really squishes it down a lot. So I had to do it twice and glue them together. Not that big a deal, but just wanted to tell you how I do that. And then I filled it with a bunch of coordinating colors of shaker bits, just different sequins and diamond dots, and then like some confetti sequins and some shaped ones as well. This Oh Happy Day is from the paper pad and I just kind of cut it into a, a flag shape and then I ran my tracing wheel, tracing wheel along the edges to make like some faux stitching if you could see that. And then this is a actual brad from Doodlebug and I just cut the prongs off the back and glued it on. Um, I just like the uh, purple flower. I thought it went well with the paper that's behind here. I'll show you in a second. And then this is a cut apart from the paper pad and it says you are and then when you take it out it says left. And it's just a pretty little card. I thought it'd be nice for journaling or to put some sort of a message on the bottom. You know, you could put this into the front cover of a mini album or um, even a card, you know, just like a thicker card. You could put it into, um, you know, scrapbooks, whatever you make journals. Uh, traveler's notebooks would be nice. So this is the backing piece that uh, I used, one of the really pretty floral papers from that paper pad. And uh, so I just think all the papers look nice together. This gold that I use for the frame, oops, oh, sorry, bought my tripod. That is from, um, I think that is from Tonic Studios. I'm not quite sure, but it's not from that paper pad. So that's the first one. And this just slides in easily. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's the first one. And then the second one I made into just a pocket without making it into a shaker. So I made it the same way, but um, it just goes together a little quicker because he just cut out the frame once out of some paper and then glue that onto the pocket piece. And then I used another piece of the cut apart, the same one. Well, it's the same paper pad as uh, this, but it looks similar. And just cut that out and glued that on top. Um, and then I used, these are cut aparts from that paper pad. They're just like little tags. So I thought these would be nice added to a mini album or something. I thought those are really pretty and they're just like ready to go ephemera pieces. 
And I just love those papers, you know, the purple and the sage green. Isn't that nice for spring? So let me measure these while I'm thinking about it. So the pocket itself is, it's about four and an eighth. And then across, it's about two and seven eighths. So just wanted to tell you on this one, I did not use the inner um, rectangle. Uh, I, I just used those, those flags that I made. So you don't have to use that if you don't want to. But if you want the measurements of that inner rectangle die cut, it's four inches by two and a half. So that's a nice piece to have in your stash, a nice die. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next one is called the 3D Cap Box. This is one of those fun 3D projects that comes with a bunch of dies that looks intimidating, but it's really not once you get going. So it comes with these. I have three sheets of dies to show you. So this is the base of the brim or the visor of the cap. Um, this is the, the piece for the back of the cap because it has that little um, cutout. And this is the... Uh, base for the for the other sections of the cap and it has six sections so you would cut this one out five this one out one and then it comes with layering pieces for those to put pattern paper on here's the solid one and here's one with the cut out and then this piece makes the sides of the box so I'll show you that here's a layering piece for that if you want to use that and then the last group of dies that you get Here's a layering piece for the visor of the cap, and you can see it's got that faux stitching on it. Really makes it look authentic. And then these are base pieces for the box. So there's the base piece and the layering piece, which is stitched. And then it comes with this piece is the like little tab on the back of the cap that looks like it's adjustable. And then it comes with two circles that you could put on top of the cap to finish it off. So let me show you the one that I made. Actually, hold on one second. Let me show you what else I used. I used this die set too on, on this project. And these are the daisy layering flowers. So it comes with three of the big daisies, three of the little, and three of the medium. And then it comes with three different sizes of centers. And these all cut out the, the, um, the inside of the petals, which is really neat, I thought. And you can combine this, like I did, I combined a big one, a medium one, and a little one to make like a graduated size flower. Or you could just use three uh, big ones that just make one big flower and just kind of offset them before you glue them together. It's up to you. So I did use those on this project and I wanted to show you the dies first. So here's the little cap that I made. Little, it's not little, it's a big cap. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I just love it. Look at the stitching detail on there. And these are all flowers, or flowers, papers again from that Recollections paper pad. I thought the nice floral um, went nicely with this pretty polka dot as well. And then using white for the base just kind of makes it pop. And then those are the two circles on top, kind of just to cover up the, you know, the joint at the top. You don't really need it, but it's a nice touch. And then here are the flowers that I made. So I made six of them in two different papers from that same paper pad. And you can see I layered them all together, small, medium, and big one. And then I did use the small flower centers from the die set on each of the flowers, just because there's a small flower in the middle. So that's, um, you know, the, the small center went well with that. And then I just alternated two green and one yellow on this side and two yellow and one green on this side. And I think they add a really nice touch to this hat. Um, it makes it really cute and feminine. XOXO comes from the paper pad and I thought that looked really cute there as well. The brim, you can kind of see the stitching detail, uh, sort of, can you see that? I don't know if you could see that. I'm trying to show it, but uh, it would show up better on a solid piece there, you could kind of see it. But um, it is a nice uh, detail, I think. And here's the back. How cute is that, right? With the little adjustable strap. And also it serves a purpose too because it kind of helps you to open the box. If you turn it over, you'll see that it, uh, the top is right on top of the box. So um, you could just, you know, take the top off like that. Or you could just, you know, put your thumb inside and just kind of push it out like that. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'll show you the inside of the box. So you just take the top off, and here's the box, the inside. So this is 
the sides are made all with that uh, side die set that, or the side die that I was showing you, this one right here. And I didn't add the layering piece because I didn't want to make it any thicker. I didn't want to make it difficult to get the top off the box. You could do it. Um, I don't really think it's necessary, especially since you can't see it with the cap on it. But I used um, the, I used white 110-pound uh, paper for this. I should have mentioned that before. And then the pattern paper is just from the paper pad. This is a cut apart cut apart from that same paper pad and I used a die from the Madodo store. I love this die. It's a it's like a layered die set that has embossing on it and it just fit perfectly around this image and I thought that was a nice surprise on the inside of the box. So let me measure these while we're here. The bottom of the box it's a hexagon. It's about five and a quarter inches uh, from side to side. Yeah and then well yeah, from edge to edge, it's six six inches. So six by five and a quarter. And then depth-wise, it's, let's say, a little bit over an inch. So a nice size box. You can fit a lot of stuff in here. That reminds me, I was going to get some things to put in here, but I did not. Um, let me see what I have that can just show you the size. Like here's an ink pad. We all know how big these are, right? It's a good reference. So you could easily fit an ink pad in here and some other stuff. I don't know, maybe a few stamps. Would that be a cute gift? So there's that. And the cap itself, let's measure that. All right, let's measure how high it is because it's a nice height cap. Um, I would say it's about three and a half, about that. And then width-wise, it's just like probably a little bit bigger than, um, let me measure it this way, than the box. So it will go over. So it's a little over five and a half one way and six the other way. And then if you want to measure it from the back to the edge of the brim, it's, let's see, about seven and a half inches. Isn't that cute? And you don't even have to use a brim if you don't want to. If you want to, I don't know, maybe it looks kind of like a beach ball or something to me too. If you wanted to, I don't know, maybe put it like on a 3D project. Not sure, but that would be fun to make it into like a beach ball theme. Maybe put some like, make this an ocean. I don't know, just thinking out loud. So that's the 3D cap. I love this. It was really fun to make. It was a pleasure, honestly. Um, just easy to put together. Again, to put the sections of the hat together, um, like the umbrella that I made, I use double-sided tape. I find that that works better for me when I have to curve edges like this um, in, in certain projects, especially this one, just because it holds it while I'm pressing it down and it doesn't, you know, like fall apart. So I did use double-sided tape on that one. All right, hope you like that. And let's go on to the last project. I'm using this coffee mug that my friend gave to me as an Easter gift. Isn't it pretty? It's a new redone mug. So got my coffee. Okay, the last project is the Hot Air Balloon Mini Album. I don't think I've ever ride in one. I'm kind of afraid of heights, but I just love the way they look and they're just so pretty. So it comes with um, these, all of these dies. It comes with, um, this is like the big background die and then um, uh, inset die. And then this one is the stitched die, uh, layering die to go onto that one. And then this is the frame die uh, for the, if you wanna make it into a shaker or just for you know the outline of your project. And these are all the decorating pieces, really, really pretty like banners and ribbons and uh, it's just so pretty. So um, I did not make mine into a mini album. When I had gotten this, and I did mention it in my haul video, I was really thinking about graduations because, you know, lots of times at graduations you think of like fly high and soar and that kind of thing. And my daughter is graduating from college next month. So I wanted to make her a graduation card using this. So let me show you what I made. So this is it. Isn't that pretty? Purple is her favorite color. So I made it purple. So I did use that pretty purple paper from the paper pad to, for the base of this. And I thought it kind of looked like if I put it at the bottom of the page that, you know, this was like rising up into the sky. So um, I did make it into a shaker and I used one layer of Dollar Tree foam board for the frame. And then I used purple textured paper and this is from AC Cardstock for the frame as well. 
For the uh, silver layers, I used some matte silver paper, and I think, believe that was from Michaels. And I used my white 80 pound um, Nina paper, or what's it called? The one from Walmart for the, um, for the card base and for all the white accents. And then for the banner, the stamp fly high, dream big. This is from Tonic Studios that I got quite a while ago. And I used a little heart accent. This actually came out of um, this piece here, which is all of these layering pieces are from the die set. And let's see what else. I used some silver diamond dots in the corner just to add a, a little bling to the corners. And then I did add some um, Nouveau, that's for the, uh, for the uh, flower accents, the glitter, the uh, aqua shimmer, that's what it's called. And this is just in the uh, glitter gloss color. And then um, I popped up the banner on some foam tape just to kind of even it out with the balloon. Isn't that pretty? All of these sections are separate when you're making the shaker. That's why I decided to go with diamond dots because they're small and they fit into these tiny sections here. You do have to kind of add them individually. I wanted to make it look super nice since this is a card for my daughter and she's graduating, like I said, so hopefully she'll, she'll save this. The die that I used for the background is the one that I've mentioned many times. It's from Tonic Studios from a summer set because um, it fits perfectly on a five by seven card, which this is. I did run my tracing wheel along the edges just to add a little bit of faux stitching, and I did that with my little flag here as well. The inside of the card, I used some digital paper from Etsy that I've been showing a lot lately. This is a very pale purple with little white hearts, the same dye. Um, this is a stamp from Lawn Fawn from their like spring saying stamp. And I did emboss it with silver embossing powder from Michaels. I forgot to mention I did that with this as well. And then this die set here is the nesting heart circle set from Scrap Diva Designs. I use this all the time. Both of these are from there. And then this stamp here is from, where's that stamp from? Mm, I think that's from the same Tonic Studio set, actually. Yeah, it is from, from the one there where I got this sentiment. And I used some silver aqua shim or no this is wink of stella i used a silver one that was on sale or clearance at hobby lobby recently and i used that to color the purple parts of the balloon so how cute is that right so let me measure this balloon for you guys i just love it i think it's so pretty it's five and a half inches long and then the widest part is uh three and seven eighths so just so pretty. Even the, the basket part of the balloon is textured, like embossed textured. So I love it. So if you wanted to make it into a mini album, you would take this die here and this would be like your main page and then um, mount your shaker on top of that. And then on the inside pages, I would use this die and then for like the, you know, the 110 pound cardstock, and then use this stitch die as a layering die, you know, put your pretty paper on that. And then the example on um, the KS Craft website, they, they made like a, a spine here. And you know, you could put it together whichever way you like. Um, I would probably add holes here and make it like, you know, a, a binder ring and just flip it up and down like that. So, so cute, right? All right, that is all that I have for you today. Um, I hope you like my projects. Again, I, I just really have so much fun making these. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Again, all of the dies that I use today will be linked in the description box. And yeah, that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel if you're not a subscriber yet. I'll be back with more videos about the dies from this release. I just got to make some more of the projects and, but then I'll be back and uh, yeah, that's it for now. I will talk to you guys later. Thanks again for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.